Yo, what's up YouTube? Welcome back. In this video, we are going to go back to the basics of this swap function, but we're going to beef it out by templatizing it and allowing it to work with other types. So if you have no idea about templates or function templates, check out the previous video. That's going to give you the foundation. If you got that down, then you should be able to follow along with this video, which is kind of like the code walkthrough. Now, before we get started, please do me a favor and check out our generous sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Now first things first, let's make sure we got the code we currently have down and we understand it. So first, looking at the calling, we pass in two variables, A and B, and we want to see that the values are swapped. When it comes to doing this with strings and integers and anything that's not an array, we need to make these pass by reference using the ampersand, or I still don't know what this thing's called, the and sign. We currently have a swap which will swap to integers, and we have a swap which will swap to strings, basically assigning the first one to a temporary variable, assigning the second one to the first one, and then assigning the temporary back to the second one. I like to think of a swap function visually. I see everything shifted over one, and that leftover one rolls around to the other side and is assigned to the end. So maybe that helps, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Anywho, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to templatize this by saying template and then saying type name t, like so. Now, instead of using a type such as int, we're just going to use t, which is very generic instead of specific, which is basically the underlying concept of generics and templates. So instead of int, we're going to use t, and same for this here. And then instead of an integer here, we're going to say t. Cool, and I'm not going to output anything in this function, so that would make sense. Generally, functions should only do what they're supposed to do, which in this case is swap. That output was more for an illustration. Cool, now what I wanna do is I actually wanna get rid of this swap. I'm gonna keep it here, but I'm just gonna comment it out. Now here's the thing, we're calling swap with two integers and then we're calling swap with two strings. All of the output happens at the end, but I'm actually going to do the output for the integers right after we swap them and then we'll do the strings after. So here's the section for integers and then here is the section for strings. So let's compile. As a reminder, I have been jumping back from folder to folder, so make sure you are in the current right folder with the swap file in it. It seems to compile right, so let's run it and see if it works. Wow, no way, it actually worked. We just got rid of one of the function overloads and replaced it with a templatized function. Now this function is capable of working with more than just integers. So that's it. I mean, that's how you templatize a function. Super easy, super useful, and it saves us a lot of code, as you can see. It saved us, in this case, only about five lines, but if you had a really complicated function, you might be able to basically get rid of a bunch of variations and keep it all in one templatized function. Now, just because we can use templatized functions doesn't mean there's no use for overloaded functions. In fact, in the next video, we're gonna be talking about overloading a templatized function and that's going to be pretty cool, so make sure you check that out. And if you've enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing to help out my channel. And now, check out that next video.